Hey, what's going on everybody? James Jackson here, back again with another video. I'm here to sort of do a breakdown and sort of a behind the scene glimpse of the recent short film that I did on the journey, which was not something I directed this time, this was actually directed by my sister, but I was the cinematographer for this short film. And today I wanted to just sort of go over just the brief uh, breakdown of how this sort of came to be and sort of how we uh, put it, basically put it together. First off, I would like to say a big thank you to all of you who basically showed love and support for the film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it is on the YouTube channel, so I'll definitely leave link up here as well as the link into the description below. But I wanted to, uh, because I, I know a lot of you guys really brought up interest in the color grading. So instead of going more into the post work um, that I normally would have done, I'm actually going to do a whole separate video just on the color grading process because this one was very uh, a bit different than how I normally do color grading. But uh, and since you guys enjoyed it so much, I wanted to just have that as my own separate video. I also have a separate video regarding audio. So keep an eye out for those two videos because the audio portion was actually a very key in sort of the post sound mixing was very critical part of this project. We wanted to just continue the, you know, the effort of going out there and just being creative and, you know, coming off of sensory load, we wanted to do something a bit more uh, downside that wasn't so uh, manpower heavy where we can just be a little bit more run and gun, but still wanted to do something a very impactful and really uh, tight story. So this, when we were doing about shooting this and releasing it, it was Women's History Month. We decided let's try to think of some projects that can be related to that. And my sister, Geraldine, basically came up with this uh, short story for surrounding, you know, Harriet Tubman and also, you know, the struggles that not just women, but we as human beings sometimes tend to go through a lot, which is you're trying so hard to just stay afloat. You're trying to just continue to uh, push yourself forward in order to achieve the American dream of prosperity. And sometimes it's just like life just hits you sometimes. And that's sort of what this story centered around. And this definitely, even though I'm not a woman, obviously, um, this still impacted me is because, you know, I've definitely felt that, especially recently where it's just like, working this hard and working hard and working long as long and doing as much as I can. Sometimes there's times where I'm really um, wondering if I'm gonna, you know, make it in some time, in days. And th this was a good film to just sort of keep that moment of where you know, even when you feel the world crushing down on you, you know, just remember all the effort that generations have came before you and have gotten you a step further to the promised land. So that was sort of the gist of what this, uh, what this story was about. So I was excited. Um, this time it was just it was mainly me and Jerlyn, and we brought back uh, Nicola again because she was excellent and she was she loved this, especially her being someone of mixed of mixed heritage. She was very very uh, she felt personally invested into the project, which we were happy to have. And then uh, I got to bring up my man uh, Richie King who came in as the help out with camera opera, but essentially he was the one who surprised, mm, surprised, wow, okay. Um, but essentially he was the one who supplied the Sony FX6 as well as the A7S III and quite a few other gears that we were able to use on this set. Um, and I, I gotta give it to Richie for that. He came, he came in big time for this, so. Big up to you, Richie, and thank you so much for helping us out. Other people that have helped contribute to this project was my man, Josue Laura of Laura Productions. 
out in the Trenton, New Hamilton area of New Jersey. Uh, amazing person if you need somebody for sound, uh, sound mixing, uh, a sound uh, production, uh, a sound maker on set. Uh, you know, he's just in terms of audio, he's he's a uh, he's just. He's one of the goats in the area, I believe. So uh, thank you, Josue, for helping out with this project as well. We wanted to keep this small because one, we were in a public space and you know we didn't really have permission or didn't seek permission. We just kind of just went there. So, but I did do some scouting um, a week before the shoot just to sort of grab some shots and I'm glad I did because it allowed me to see the area. Um, the area that we shot at is basically where this statue of Harriet Tubman is. Um, essentially where the statue is, it's basically right next to a parking lot. And then there's the, and then there's the river, the riverside that's behind it. So I'm glad I was able to see it. So, cause one, I was able to get some framing and get some ideas, especially for that opening shot. Uh, I really wanted to sort of set the area of where the scene was. And basically that shot of sail going to the rocks, I wanted to go to the rocks and then there was like this uh, waterfront residence that was like across the, across the way. I wanted to capture that so when we cut and we finally see Delta, uh, we sort of know where the space was that we were seeing. So being able to get that scouting report. There was another area that we wanted to do, but unfortunately it actually got flooded because apparently high tide really is extremely high. And it basically like the pathway was completely flooded. So it was basically non-usable at that point. Um, and the other good thing about scouting before is that you may find areas and hidden gems that you didn't even think about. And one of those locations was actually where the mental, uh, the mental scene where she sort of just, you know, in this wooded area where it's like basically all of these, you know, negative thoughts are supposed to be like clawing at her. And I was able to see this and then there was like at low tide, there's like this walkway where you can kind of walk where the river typically runs, but at low tide, it's, it's totally walkable. And there were seagulls that typically come down there too so I got that and I was like this would actually be cool like a cool like sort of a physical manifestation of what sort of how she's present her mind and that's what we ended up using for that space and I was super happy because it really sort of uh, I think the the visual aspects of that really hammered home on that and um yeah, it was, it, it, so look, scouting is like key people. Like scouting can really help you, you know, plan and get everything accordingly. Even when you do plan, sometimes things go awry. Um, and in this case, uh, there were certain shots that we were, that we were getting, particularly the jogging scene, but that was the most important piece. And unfortunately that, that took a little longer than we anticipated. So we got backed up by everything and we were sort of catching up with the sun. The other thing that I was that on the day of shoot that I wasn't anticipating was one, it started to rain, but it was only like in the very beginning of the morning, so it wasn't fine. But the big thing was it was supposed to be uh, overcast like all day and definitely wasn't. It was, uh, there was definitely portions where the sun was out and beaming. So, you know, again, Richie came with the scrim, so which helped us diffuse the sun, uh, particularly where sh she's on the dock. It was like, I think that was like 10, 10 o'clock in, uh, in the morning at that point. And we really needed the scrim at that point in order to get, you know, those shots of her just sitting in sort of in her, getting in her mind. And we basically used it and luckily I was on the 24 to 105 Sony when we were shooting on the FX6. And it was, uh, it definitely helped just going into, the, I went more, definitely went tight with that because I really wanted to compress because I didn't want to see too much of the background. 
So, and then it allowed me to get the scrim close enough to where I can cover the whole thing, where it just, everything just looked natural. Yeah, lighting and control and lighting is just, it's just such a, a, a key element that, you know, while even when you're running and gunning, just having like this stuff helps just really just gives that extra flavor of quality to the, uh, to the, to the project that you just need. And if it wasn't for that scrim, it would, I don't think the look would have been as good as it wanted to. So once we did that, and once we got the jogging done, we got the shots by the statue and that was like pretty straightforward and really good. And I, I gotta admit, I, I enjoyed the FX6. By the way, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more on the FX6 and using the FX6 in another video. But I will just say this, this was my first time just physically using it. I've, I've seen it before and I've edited FX6 footage before, but this is my first time fully using it on a project. And I will say this, the handing, the handing, wow, come on, come on, James. <laughs> uh, but the handling of it is well, is really well. Uh, the It's really well, once you put like batteries and put in like really rig it out, it's actually a very well balanced camera. And that's one of the best things I will say in terms of experiencing shooting with the Sony FX6 is that it's so well balanced that hand grip is just clutch. The the hand the handle on the FX6 is just clutch, and also uh, this allowed me to shoot on the Core SWX Powerbase Edge Links, which I will do a review on. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Core for giving me those batteries for this project. Uh, it really really did came in clutch for that. Uh, and I also love the fact because I was able to link two of those Powerbase Edge Links up and put them on the Sony FX6. And essentially I ran them both the entire day with almost never turning off the camera except once to take for a 15 minute break that we took. But outside of that, the camera was on as well as uh, we attached the Shinobi to it as well, but the camera was on and running the entire time. And both of those batteries basically ran to about 20%, 25%, and but by the time we wrapped, which, you know, gives good credit. So just like, you can go through almost a full production day with those, uh, with those two of those batteries on something as powerful as like the FX6. So after that, we went and did the swamp, the swamp scene, um, the nightmare scene. And I really, it's one of my favorite aspects of the shoot that day, um, simply because I got to play with the branches and sort of seeing how we could sort of, again, make it seem like almost as if the branches were clawed. Like one of my favorite shots is her standing uh, off on this edge where trees just on us, like branches. It's like almost like these like essences are like clawing for her. It's, it's a, it's a, I, I love that shot. It's one of my favorite shots. And then my absolute favorite shot is when the tide settled and we got our walkway, there was a bunch of seagulls. And I was just, uh, I was nervous because I knew we would only have one shot to do this. So I was like, like trying to be like Bugs Bunny, like shh. And, but she went in, we got her getting the shot and we, we basically got it. And it was definitely shaky. Um, because I basically handheld the entire shot, but I kind of wanted, I also uh, was able to get it right enough because I wanted it to be a bit more chaotic because this is like supposed to be like the breaking point and I wanted to separate it from the smoothness of her actually jogging. It's supposed to represent two different things. So once we got that set up, we basically went to do the train sequence where we basically just hopped on the train Funny enough, uh, and in this experience, my sister lost her phone in the process, but luckily she got that back. So yay, thank you SEPTA for that. Um, and basically, yeah, we just quickly went in and did the shot, sat down, grabbed shots of her sitting, getting the scene. Um, I also, uh, on the deck, <laughs> cause it was cold and uh, at the time, uh, 
Gerilyn lost her phone was when we did this part where, where part where she gets bumped. Basically, Gerilyn doing her uh, Hitchcockian uh, moment where she would just come in and bump Nicola. And <laughs> had a, it was just funny because that was when she lost her phone, so the nudge was a little, little bit more personal. So, but the whole team, you know, everybody was wonderful. Everybody came in and did their job. Nicola was, once again, um, a dream to work with. She could hit all the emotional points that whenever Gerilyn was directing, and this being Gerilyn's second directorial project, you know, she did she did a great job. She knew exactly what wanted she wanted. Even when me and her would argue and debate <laughs> over things, she knew what she wanted, and, you know, it's good that you can have that vision and people can respect it and be able to go in and execute it. Yeah, that's that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully this wasn't too long for you guys, but uh, let me know what you guys would like to know more about this behind the scenes of this shoot and also leave your comments down below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please take the time to subscribe, you know, and make sure to hit the likes before you leave the likes definitely help out with the algorithms. As always, until next time, take care everyone.